Hello again, you're watching your news tonight. The EU and China have agreed in principle on an investment deal that will give European companies greater access to Chinese markets despite a changing political backdrop. After seven years of negotiations, the deal gives EU businesses permission to operate in China in sectors like electric cars, healthcare and telecoms. But Brussels has drawn the wrath of the incoming Biden administration, which demanded to be consulted before they moved forward. One European MEP likened the agreement to putting lipstick on a pig, saying the EU has failed to address workers' rights in China. Well, for more on this, we're joined by Martin Jarrett, an expert in international investment law. Well, hello there, Chu. We've got quite a lot to discuss here. But first of all, before we look at the issues that might derail this agreement, um, how significant is it? Well, there are over 3,300 uh, investment agreements like this one. Um, this is by far the biggest in, in terms of the, the coverage it, it has. And what I mean by coverage is that uh, the two biggest economies in the world are involved in this deal, so its significance can't be overstated. OK, significance can't be overstated, but several uh, members of the European uh, Parliament, human rights organisations, are sounding the alarm bells, as we said. Uh, one MEP likened it to putting lipstick on a pig. Uh, should one be doing deals with China when it has a track record of human rights abuses? Well, look, it, it, it has to be said that in one of the pillars of this agreement is sustainable development. Uh, within that pillar, you can see there's two topics there. One, uh, there's labour rights. And two, there are also some particularly interesting provisions on the environment, particularly the implementation of the Paris Agreement. So I think everyone should approach this deal with, with open eyes and read it for, for what it is. Uh, there are some very significant obligations on China here to, to act and implement ILO conventions. And, and most interestingly, with regard to the, to the Paris Agreement, that the major shortcoming of the Paris Agreement is that the obligations in it cannot be enforced. Now, what the EU has done in this agreement is potentially made those obligations in the Paris Agreement enforceable. So I, I think people should, should look at this agreement with open eyes before making any assumptions. OK, looking at this with open eyes, I note the fact that you said uh, potentially. I would also like to point out the issue of ILO, the International Labour Organization standards, because China has previously committed to these, yet uh, we do see reports again of human rights abuses, uh, most notably recently against Uyghur populations in Zhangjing. So why will, why will this be different in terms of leverage towards Beijing uh, when it comes to the implementation? The, the main thing with, with this agreement is, is this here. Uh, it has an enforcement mechanism in it. So what that means is that when the EU sees that China is not living up to its obligations in this particular deal, it has the possibility to take a claim against China before an international court. So in that way, the obligations in, in this agreement re have legal teeth. OK, potential legal teeth there. Well, many thanks, sir, for joining us. Martin Jarrett on the programme.